Okay, we're getting into the meat of the project now. In this episode, I'll cover all the plumbing and fittings to collect rainwater in this 500 gallon off-grid tank. <laughs> In part one and two of this series, I first detailed the excavation and pouring of the concrete curb, followed by the construction of the cedar and corrugated metal surround. This tank will collect rainwater from the roof of this pavilion, and the surround I built in part two will support most of that plumbing. This tank came with a two inch bulkhead fitting already installed. It's for connecting more tanks together and for draining the tank quickly, or we can use it for drawing off water. I'll add a ball valve to this existing bulkhead fitting. I first add a reducer down to one and a half inches. I didn't have channel lock pliers big enough for these, so I used the biggest wrench I had. Then I'll add this short nipple and then the ball valve. I'll be adding a float and screen to this tank so I can draw off the cleanest water that's just below the surface and away from any sediment in the bottom. Before I can add the float and screen, I need to assemble the parts first. I bought some of the tank parts and decided to make some of them from existing fittings. I'll have links to these parts in the description or in my blog post on my website. Go to manabouttools.com tank500. I cut the float hose down to a length I thought appropriate for the height of this tank. It's somewhere around two feet taller than the tank and I thought that would be good. There's a barbed fitting that goes into the inside part of the bulkhead fitting first. Then the clear flexible hose goes onto that. It was a tight fit and tough to get this on, even with some soapy water as lubricant. and then a stainless steel hose clamp secures it. Then the screen and float goes on the other end. and a lanyard is tied to the float. This will keep the screen up off the bottom of the tank when the water level gets low. I'll need to drill a hole in the tank for a bulkhead fitting for the hose that's connected to this float. It will be around the back at the southeast corner. I'll use a hole saw for this and drill this hole about four inches off the bottom. Getting the bulkhead fitting through this hole can be tricky. I first screwed in a barbed fitting into the bulkhead fitting, then I tied a string to the barbed end and taped it too. The other end of the string is taped to the end of a pipe. Then this pipe is set in the tank with the string end resting on the hole I drilled. I then carefully remove the tape and pull the string through the hole. I remove the pipe from the tank, then lay in the hose and float assembly, being sure that the end of the lanyard on the float is still outside.
I now pull the string to bring the bulkhead fitting through the hole and attach the nut. and snug this up with a wrench. I'll be connecting this fitting to the mini pump house later, but for now I'll add a ball valve so I can make the tank watertight. I detailed the construction of the pump house box in part 2. To find the best spot for the tank inlet, I sighted down a large speed square. I lined up one edge to the curb and marked the point where the 45 degree edge contacted the tank. Then I can mark my center point for the inlet hole. I marked this location this way so I could use standard 45 degree elbows to connect the pipe to the surround wall. I tried to position this hole as high up on the tank as possible. Not so high though that it would run into the threaded lip where the lid screws on. You don't get a lot of second chances drilling holes in a big tank, so I took my time planning and thinking this through. I'll use a large hole saw for the inlet and overflow pipes. I drilled until the pilot bit pierced the tank, then clicked the drill in reverse to cut the big hole. This keeps the hole saw from grabbing and this worked really well. A rubber grommet fits into this hole and the pipe expands the rubber to make the seal against the plastic watertight. Then I push in a short piece of pipe. It's tight and a bit of soapy water helps. So that water entering the tank does not stir up sediment, I'll run a pipe to the bottom with two elbows to create a calming inlet. This will keep the water from splashing as the tank fills. I glue up a 90 and 45 fitting and attach it to one end. Then add a 90 to the other end. Then set this in the tank and attach it with a stainless steel screw, in case I need to remove it at any time later. Now I can drill the hole for the overflow siphon. It's just slightly lower than the inlet hole, and I needed it to be rotated around this access hatch wall so I didn't run into the inlet pipe. Then a short piece of pipe is convinced strenuously that this is its new home. Okay. 
For this tank overflow, I'll use standard fittings to create a siphon. It's made from three 90 degree elbows and an angled pipe. When the tank is full, the siphon will skim water off the surface and send it down a pipe to the dry well that I dug in part one of this series. Now I'll glue that in place. You can buy a siphon formed from one piece, but my supplier was out of stock. I think it works out to be cheaper than making your own when you add up the cost of the fittings. And there's options without a siphon that use a simple 90 degree fitting that has a screen to keep mosquitoes out. In case this siphon dries out, I'll add a screen to the end of the pipe that runs into the drain, just in case. And that'll be done later. Next I'll tie the tether for the float to one of the pipes to keep it up off the bottom. On the other side of the tank I'll add a gauge. It's a float on a spring coiled spool that you set to your low and high water points. Now I'll start to put together my assembly of fittings that will attach to the tank inlet. I bought a first flush diverter kit and need to adapt it to a 3 inch drain pipe. The fittings it comes with are designed for the thicker Schedule 40 PVC pipe. So I need to first glue in these sleeves to allow me to connect everything together. The gate valve I'll be using is also designed for this thicker pipe. Let me stop for a minute to explain what I'm gluing up here. Water will first run into this angled downspout screen. This will help keep leaves and debris in the gutter from entering the tank. Below that screen is a T fitting, with one of the outlets running into the first flush T. Below is a gate valve that will connect to the drain pipe that goes to the dry well. When this gate valve is closed, water will back up against the gate and then fill the first flush diverter before it finally ends up in the tank. So the gate valve will be closed when I want to fill the tank, and it will be left open when I want water to bypass the first flush and tank inlet and instead go directly to the drain. Hang in there, it will become more clear as I attach this assembly to the fence surround. Okay, moving on. I could only find the black ABS adapter sleeves, but they will work fine for this. I just need the right glue that works both on PVC and ABS together. And you have very little time, a few seconds really, to get the parts in the right position once you glue them and slide them together. And there's no going back for a second try. You can only guess how I learned this lesson. So I'll glue these sleeves to the first flush tee then to the gate valve. Then with short pipes I can attach the gate valve and tees together. I didn't want all the plumbing and fittings hanging off a post on the pavilion. For one, there wasn't enough room and I didn't think it would look so good. 
Better in this case to keep it all close to the tank on the taller east wall of the surround. A 90 degree elbow is attached to the outlet of the first flush diverter tee. Then a pipe and fitting assembly is secured to the tank inlet pipe with rubber couplings. For some of the plumbing here, I tried to think about having to disassemble things later. So I only glued what I really needed to. I like these three inch flexible rubber couplings with the two screw clamps. They are great for quickly taking sections apart and to manage tough connection points or those that require some flexibility. I'm not sure how well they'll hold up to sunlight over time, so I may have to add some protection for them later. Now I'll add the downspout screen. Here I'm adding another pipe and elbow section for the tank overflow. It will run into a Y fitting below the gate valve. A length of Schedule 40 pipe is glued onto the first flush diverter tee, then a threaded section glued to the bottom of that. The diverter holds a ball, screen, and pinhole washer, and this system is designed to catch the dirty water that is first coming off the roof when it starts to rain. I'll add a link to a previous video of mine that explains this better. I'll glue up the pipe that runs around the back of the tank to the drain. And on the end, it has a screen flapper attachment. Finally, I'll run a pipe from the gutter of the pavilion to the tank surround. This will dump water onto the downspout screen. This was a bit tricky to pull off, but it ended up working pretty well. The last bit of plumbing I have to do here is to add a vent to the tank. For this, I bought an RV tank vent and added a bug screen. I cut a disc of aluminum window screen and siliconed it to the base of the vent. I cut a hole in the top of the tank with a hole saw, added some silicone to the base of the vent, and secured it with screws.
In the next episode, I'll install a solar panel on the roof of the pavilion and run wires to a controller and deep cycle battery that will power a pump at the back of the tank. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.